Hi there. Welcome to the friends and family of Abiding Hope Lutheran Church in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, this morning, we're going to start a new series called Sharing Our Stuff. And it's intended to bring our congregation a little bit closer to each other and meet them in a, a place that they don't normally see on Sunday morning. Our guest this morning is Judy Basilio. Good morning, and Judy. Are you an Erie lifer? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I was born in Erie and uh, finally moved out to the country when I got married and have lived in the Cranesville area for about 44 years. And Cranesville is about seven, eight miles south of Girard, something like that? Exactly. It's, it's almost right between Albion and Girard. So you are, you're out in the country a little bit. I am. Yep. Uh, what we're doing with this program and I'll explain this for those listening, is we are asking people to bring in things that are important to them, that are some part of their life. And that uh, we ask that uh, they be something we can at least look at and talk about. And you are the first one out of the shoot on this thing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put something up on the screen at this point, if you'll bear with me for a second. And we're going to go here. And I'm looking at a bed. And it's got a pillow with a flag on it. Are you looking at the same thing? I am, yes. Tell me about it. You're on. Well, this is called a Jenny Lind bed. Jenny Lind, L-I-N-D. Jenny Lind was a Swedish opera star. And she was not well known in the United States. Well, she wasn't well known until P.T. Barnum showed up and he was on a tour in the United States and took her along and he promoted her. And we all know how P.T. Barnum promoted. She traveled with his tour in order to make money for some favorite charities that she had in Sweden. The fine promoting of the Divine Jenny, as she was called, her innocence, benevolence, and brilliant voice. He also promoted a modest furniture using Jenny Lynn to further this effort. It's used most often for baby and children's furniture, but it is also used for some adult furniture, which is what you see here, a single bed. This promotion led to Jenny Lynn furniture. This bed my mother slept in uh, when she grew older, she slept in that bed until she had to have a hospital bed. Judy, Judy, would you kind of put a time frame around this? Uh, now, P.T. Barnum, Barnum and Bailey, did they not winter near Gerard? Have I got that? Gerard, right? yeah, yeah. Well, so, this time frame was 1850 that they figured that he was ha he had this tour that she was on and he began to promote Jenny Lynn furniture. And when would it come, have come into your family? Oh, well, it was my mother's bed that she brought from her home and she was born in 1910. So probably she got it as a child, maybe 1910, 1915, 1920, somewhere in that time frame. I'll ask you something. Is it comfortable? Have you slept in it? I have slept in it and uh, it's got the old springs, you know, not, not an inner spring, but just springs, the metal things, and then a mm -hmm. mattress. And it's, it's tolerable, but it's, it's not comfortable. Now this, this was in your home when you were living in Erie? Yes. And whereabouts in Erie did you live at that point? I lived at uh, 32nd and Liberty. Okay. Um, so uh, anything else about this that kind of jumps to your mind as memories? No, it it's just has a real soft memory for me because I, I know my mother loved that bed. Okay. Well, why don't we move on? to the next thing that you brought to us. And we'll try this. And that looks like a drop-down desk. And that That's, looks really old. That 
that is very old. Um, my mother's father uh, was Earl Lewis Schneider, and he was born around 1890. And I think he built this as a young man because it's, it's a fine piece, but it's not, you know, furniture quality that you would mm -hmm. expect. But uh, my mother used this desk as a child and then she, she took it with her and I got it when she and my dad moved into an apartment. And it's a great little desk. There's a drawer underneath the, the panel that's open there. And I have to open that drawer just a little bit to help hold the hinges on, on the desk itself. Um, other than that, it's as you can see, the legs are pretty spindly. They aren't nice and solid. So it, it's not something that you'd want little kids messing around with. It's a homemade quality. Has, has it been worked on or refinished or anything since? No, no, I just, I just polish it up. You just polish it up and you can yep. see by the, I guess the desk top beyond the fold down piece where that's been pretty well used over the years. It looks like oh, yeah. more or less disappeared from it. Do we have a picture of it with the, the top closed? Well, let's do this. And then I'm gonna have to do this in order to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's there. not quite as clear, but it's, it's pretty good. And that little piece in the center of the uh, desk cover there, I don't know, I don't suspect my grandfather did that. I bet he bought that somewhere. It, it looks like a pretty, uh, a, a, a piece you might buy somewhere. But An ornamentation of some yes. sort, you know, just like a crest. Right, right. Uh, does it match up with the poles on the, the door drawer below? Yes, yes. So they yeah. were the, 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 line the, see, the line you see down there is something that I did that ruined the finish. <laughs> and as you can see, I-, I You wanna tell us about it? How I did it? Yeah. I don't know. I just know that it, it wasn't it's, that way when I got it. It is part of the family lore. Yes, That's right. Story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I um, keep a lot of my church books on top of that. If you could probably see. I, and, I was just gonna ask, do you actually use that day to day or are you afraid no, to sit no, down? I'm, I'm kind of afraid to. In the drawer is a lot of things that I, I like. There's a notebook in there that I had in 12th grade or probably through high school. And it's got some neat things in it that every once in a while I, I go down memory lane and go through that notebook. But yeah. um, I'm gonna ask you something. Are you any place near that desk as we speak? It's actually, I would have to leave the office, go through the dining room and go into my bedroom. Well, no, we, we won't bother with that. I, I was going to say, we might take a look at that notebook if you wanted to, but that, <laughs> uh, anything else? Any of your children use this? Any of the, you let them any place near it when they were growing up? I, I don't think so. I, I think that that was, well, as a matter of fact, they were almost grown up by the time my mother and dad moved to an apartment. Oh, okay. So, yeah. There. Um, your brothers and do you have brothers and sisters? I had a brother, Earl, and uh, he died about five years ago. And, and we never fought over what we got, but I think <laughs> he would have liked to get this desk. <laughs> First one to the very drop. Okay, I'm going to go back. And we're gonna get you back up here. Okay, here Thank we're you. back. Why don't you show us the next thing you brought us to see? Which would be- <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try. Okay. Now. Okay. Uh, a large baking pan. That's a, a, a baking pan. Now that, that looks like a fairly ordinary baking pan, but you know, has been around for a while. Right. Tell and us why it's wars. I mean, it's so, Tell no us longer it's real clean. <clears throat> um, my father and his brothers took over what was at that time the oldest bakery in, in Erie. 
which is like circa 1859 when it was when it was uh, started. Uh, it was located on 18th Street in Erie, on the west side of Erie. 18th, um, and this is 18th and Hickory, which are between Chestnut and Sassafras. Okay, so you're fairly close to center of town. What was, right. the, the, what was the name of the bakery? Hersberger's Bakery. Okay. And if you go by now, it is a tire shop. Is it Firestone? I don't remember, but it's a tire shop. And parts of it are still the old bakery parts, but most of it has been like, it was a home besides a bakery. My, my uncle and my aunt and her family lived there. Were they immigrants? So, pardon? Were, were your, was your, what extraction was your family? Were these folks immigrants or were they second or third generation? Yes, yes. Um, my, let's see, my grandfather, Amandus, came from Germany. I have to find my notes because I just wrote this down this morning. Oh, no big deal. It, it's, you know. Well, he came, Amandus came from Germany and that would have been my father's great grandfather. And then uh, he married and one of his children was Lucas and they had a bakery in Buffalo, New York, and then they came to Erie and they built the bakery there. And uh, this pan is happy to me because I remember my father used to bake these square cakes and they, he, they would dip them in either a lemon pudding or a raspberry jelly-like substance or a chocolate and then roll them in coconut. Oh and they call them coconut squares, and, and you can find them in bakeries, mm -hmm. probably Sundimers to this day. So how long was uh, a bakery in business? Uh, when you were, the you bakery were physically went in out of business in, in the early 60s, I would say, 1960. Bakeries at that point, there was the big firches and the tip tops and those, and they had kind of taken away the day-to-day -day bread, uh, which is what people needed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the cakes and stuff were a supplement, but they needed to, to have the breads. And our bakery was particularly known for pumpernickel and rye breads. And after they weren't around anymore, people began to realize, you know, how good they were. Did they continue to make, they, they weren't able to continue? No, with the no. Bread. and that was, that was a very, very sad day. Uh, I remember, you know, when, when my father came home for the last time and it was, it was extremely sad. Uh, you have scrapbooks or papers from that time? Not really. I think, really? I think maybe my cousin does who I was on the phone with this morning. <laughs> Because I, I was thinking at some point, stuff like that, the Erie County Historical Society loves to get things that are specific to Erie itself. Ah. And if, you know, rather than letting that just go away. Right. You, know, you, you might think of looking that up and, you know, seeing if, if they would be interested because it, it's, it's a part of history. It really is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Did you work in the bakery? I was too young to work in the bakery. My brother, uh, he used to go there on Saturday mornings and he would help get the things out because that was the big day. Mm -hmm. They also, they went to the central market and they had a, a stand there. And my mother used to work in that stand sometimes. I used to just hang around and wait for a hot loaf of French bread to come out. And then my aunt would cut it and I'd get butter on it. Well, the central market did, that was, was that every day? And is that the one on State Street? It was the one on Peach, between Peach and Sassafras. Okay, it's yeah, where the, okay. the Central Mall is now. Was, was the stand open every day or was that something that was just? That, only Saturday. Only Saturdays. The store was open on 18th and Hickory every day, but only Saturdays they went into the, the mall. I am just barely old enough to remember that. 
<laughs> I, could re- I, I could remember sadly people taking live chickens by the neck in into there to be sold and th- that stuff used to make me very sad well it, i'd eat the meat but i didn't want to know how it got there <laughs> most of what we eat did not die of old age i mean i just part of the, <laughs> right part of the life cycle that we have is there anything else you'd like to pick up and show to us while i've got you here anything jump to mind if, if not you know nope i didn't i didn't grab anything else okay. Tell you what, um, the next we'll, we, will, we will finish <laughs> this today. It, it has been a real pleasure. Um, I'll let you know when this is going up on the church's website. It'll be relatively soon. Um, and if you come across something that you think might be worth talking about, give me a call and we'll do it again. Sure. Okay, Judy. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Take care. <laughs>